Hi, can you hear me well? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yeah, today I would like to um, speak or perhaps even talk with you about, uh, about Python, obviously. We are the, in a good place for that, uh, about data science and about uh, open, open source and the education. So many, many topics, actually. Uh, and uh, just to make this very clear on the very beginning, I'm not a programmer. So uh, it's like uh, my background is in diversity, my background is in sociology. Uh, I also work with, uh, with companies like B2B. Uh, but for like many years now, about seven or eight, I'm working about um, diversity and I'm working about uh, educational program in, uh, in programming and in data science. So uh, yeah, just please don't ask me the question like, uh, Okay, so how I can become a um, data scientist in, uh, ta-da, three weeks. Okay, so yes, first of all, uh, I have no clue. And second of all, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't work like that. And the second question which I would, mm, would not answer or just st staying here and smiling very, uh, very broadly to you, it will be, okay, so which algorithm is uh, better? Is that algorithm A or algorithm B? Um, okay, fantastic, yes. Um, so we, we are very lucky to have many people in here who will be uh, very happy to answer this question. That's not me. And uh, also, uh, in terms of this question, it's, it's like perhaps if you will uh, ask that kind of question, you will uh, get an answer. Okay, could you be more specific? Could you tell me something more about this issue? So yeah, just, just so you know. And um, in terms of, I would like to learn something about you. So uh, how many of you uh, are writing uh, Python code uh, less than six months? Okay, perfect. How many of you is uh, writing uh, in Python uh, more than two years? Okay. Uh, and how many of you have run more than uh, 100 uh, data science experiments. Okay, you will not learn so much. Maybe something about uh, open source, I hope. Um, okay, and uh, how many of you uh, are very, very fresh, uh, consider themselves as very, very fresh in data science? Oh, you are in the right place. <laughs> okay. So this presentation, I hope that will be helpful for you uh, in couple in couple ways. And the very first way, those are resources. So I prepare more than 20 links for you about open source, about uh, data science, about Python, about different groups all over the world. And uh, you can find all these resources as well as the whole presentation on my GitHub account. So uh, yeah, please just um, uh, use that. Uh, and also it's uh, CC BY. So you can use that freely. Uh, it's just a matter of, if you will say that, uh, okay, the author is Kamila Stepniowska and uh, this kind of things, then uh, you will be okay. And um, so some, some basics about open source, some basics about um, data science workflow. And, that's, and after that, something which I hope it's um, very helpful and not only for beginners, it's the way of thinking that um, if you are learning something, it's good to have uh, free, um, free things in your learning experience. And one is uh, working on projects. The second uh, one is cooperate, uh, cooperation, so cooperate with other people. And uh, this um, third one is contribution. So it's not only about uh, learning from others, it's also giving to others. For example, giving a talk, giving a lightning talk, prepare some open source materials. So I hope that's uh, something which you will uh, take from this presentation. Okay, so shall we? Uh, an open source. So basically, um, I believe that many of you are familiar with open source. We are in really good place for that. Uh, but just to just to some, make some kind of remi reminder, and it's about uh, f free use, free modification, free sharing. And um, as a user, 
you might consider uh, two cases. Like one case is like if you are if you are um, using some materials which are text, which are pictures, which are videos, and uh, that kind of materials perhaps will be on, if those, those are open materials, that will be on Creative Commons. And uh, if, you are, uh, if you are writing a code, uh, then perhaps uh, this, uh, if you, sorry, if you are using a code which is open source, then perhaps that will be on one of um, uh, very popular licenses, and uh, that might be MIT, that might be uh, GNU, uh, that might be, um, might be um, actually many, many others. Apache is also very popular. And uh, one thing which is really cool, for example, for, uh, for GitHub, it's like when you are uh, doing requests, you can just choose uh, the, the full um, a license from uh, in a GitHub. You don't need to necessarily like copy and paste that. So uh, just for as a user, if you are uh, if you are using some materials which which has, uh, which are open source, just please keep in mind if those are Creative Commons, uh, then you have a couple of variations. And the most important is to just to remember that the basic one is uh, CC BY. And CC BY uh, allows you to uh, use material freely, to share material, to modify, uh, to use that for uh, for commercial and non-commercial purposes as well. And then you have a couple variations, which basically are different variation of uh, if you can, uh, if you need to use the same uh, the same uh, license or not, uh, if you need to, uh, if you can change the the source or not, uh, and if you you if you can use that um, for commercial purposes or not. So that's, those are basics, uh, very useful basics, I hope. And if you are a creator, if you are building your own uh, code or if you are building your own um, a text, a video or other kind of material, uh, those are uh, links which uh, hope, uh, hopefully will be very helpful. So basically in terms of general uh, use and general, uh, general selection, uh, Chose License is a very good website uh, for the text, uh, basically Creative Commons, and for code uh, op open source uh, that are. So please uh, remember that will be on the presentation, which is available for you. And uh, let's, uh, let's go to Python. So uh, asking a question why Python uh, in this place is a little bit tricky. So it's like, you know, um, so maybe maybe actually someone from you can answer me uh, why Python? Why do you use Python? TensorFlow. TensorFlow. Oh, great. Yeah. So data science, basically. Yes. Sorry. They wrap the world, okay. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a way, definitely. And and one 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 thing why uh, they or we wrap the world? It's like because it's a community, so it's uh, it's uh, very easy to just create things and very easy to share these things and very easy to contribute. Actually, nice. So yeah, uh, welcoming, supportive, very good for very beginners. Um, so uh, in terms of general learning experience, uh, I hope that uh, like building project, build, finding a project which will be uh, interesting for you, finding a project which uh, you, are very, uh, you are very dedicated to, uh, finding um, right people and uh, finding the way how you can contribute. Those, I hope that uh, that's helpful. <clears throat> yeah, in terms of uh, being a beginner in, in Python, um, it's good to know uh, PEP number eight. It just uh, will help you a lot in terms of how to um, how to use Python properly, uh, how to make a, a good practice, uh, how to have a good style, and it's something which you might not think about uh, on the very beginning, uh, because you just want to write a code and you want uh, it to work. Uh, but it's something which uh, will help you uh, in advance. Oh, uh, uh, Zen of Python. So uh, you might have, uh, have been on a lightning talk yesterday, and it was a little bit of trolling about Zen of Python. Uh, so why is it not helpful? 
Uh, I would say it, it was a trolling um, and uh, a really good presentation, by the way. But uh, but the spirit of uh, like using uh, Zen of Python is more of a, a very very high level. So it's um, like please don't take that very serious, but in a very very high level that might be helpful. Um, yeah. If you are a very beginner in Python, uh, actually Python Software Foundation is the best uh, best place to go. So uh, Python Software Foundation has uh, really great resources, and I really like that uh, they are giving resources for uh, programmers and non-programmers because it's, it's very helpful. Uh, it's like the different state of mind. Um, and actually in this uh, resources uh, you can find uh, books, you can find videos, you can find uh, tutorials, uh, you can find um, many other uh, kind of resources and it's updated. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's alive. And uh, you might know Lynn Root, uh, she will be also a speaker today, a keynote speaker, and uh, her talk which was uh, I believe very first time um, uh, she done this talk in, in, uh, on EuroPython in Florence, I believe, and um, uh, Sink or Swim, uh, you, have, um, you have there on, not only like um, these rules how to, uh, how to learn how to code, but you all for beginners, but you also have uh, some, uh, some projects which you basically can run yourself. So there is multiple projects uh, on API, for example, on some chatbots and some other projects which you basically can, uh, can, uh, can use for your education. And, okay, so data science. Um, you know, machine learning, it, it is how it is. Like we are searching uh, till we'll find the right answer, the, the right answer, that's the most important. Um, but, Besides that, um, why data science and Python goes together very well? Uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar with this uh, survey, uh, 2017, um, this results. It, it, was, um, it was done uh, also, um, like, like PyCharm in a way had uh, some, uh, some finger there, there as well. Um, but it's a very good survey uh, which was taken on um, more than 9,000 uh, 9, uh, developers uh, from almost 150 countries and uh, it gives a really good knowledge about what, uh, how Python is used by developers uh, nowadays and uh, data science uh, actually are very, very strong in this, uh, in, in this uh, survey. Um, and uh, what kind of technologies in uh, in data science? So you can see this uh, very popular now, which is pandas, which is um, which is uh, stick learn. Uh, you also have um, like many many more. That's a good slide for for those of you who are um, who are new into data science to just to check uh, what's there. Mm. And a couple more which might be helpful. So PyCharm and uh, Spider, those, those are um, uh, IDE. Uh, so uh, those are this, um, this thing, this environments which you will be using. Uh, Spider is basically for, for Python use. Uh, PyCharm is for all uh, languages uh, purpose. And something which uh, actually I was uh, using in, uh, very often is uh, Jupyter Notebook. It's something which uh, is very helpful in terms of trainings, especially because uh, uh, for if you are building a training and you would like uh, your uh, your participants to basically uh, work with uh, work with uh, code um, like in the real time, that's something which can help you a lot and it's very easy to uh, easy to prepare. And uh, it's um, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, IPython Notebooks, that was the previous name. Uh, it's something which, uh, which is very helpful in education of, of pro programming. So, um, in general, Python, it's, um, Python uh, in data science, it's something which you uh, want to consider to use as, um, 
as a tool to build your tools. So it's not a purpose in an, as a purpose to just use Python. It's something uh, which uh, is a programming language which can help you to just build what you definitely want to build in data science. It's just a tool in, a, in this way. And um, like some, some words about how um, data scientists' everyday life and everyday work looks like. So, um, okay, like a bunch of the time it's, uh, it's just preparing data. So it's uh, uh, see what you actually have in data set, see what you, you are missing, see what kind of errors do you have. So like cleaning, clearing uh, data. Um, and then just praying to have uh, enough of them to, to run your experiments. Um, but then, then is a, far, a fun part. The fun part, uh, which, uh, which has, uh, th that's, that's just an example of how you can think about that. But the most important things from the slide is like um, the understanding of your uh, problem, the understanding of your issue, which you are focusing at. Uh, it's, uh, it's crucial to just understand what, uh, what kind of da data do you have, what, kind, what uh, is the input, what uh, you would like to be an output. It's, it's very crucial and it's something which uh, on the very beginning you might not um, think so seriously about. And then uh, you have this really fun part bet between like search and experiment. Actually, it's like going in between searching, experimenting, searching, experimenting, searching, experimenting. So it's um, uh, those are many steps to take, uh, but it might be really a fun part. Um, that's a question uh, when I was preparing myself for this presentation, I asked um, a um, couple of data scientists, my friends, um, how, how do they actually find the right um, algorithm? How do they find the right sources? And um, the very first version of a question which I was asking, it was, where do you find the right resources? So I got a very simple answer, uh, all, over, uh, all over, in the internet. Okay, yeah, great, that's, that's good to know. Uh, but uh, what are the crit criteria? So, uh, so how you can think that, um, how you can um, just uh, decide that one algorithm is good for something and f for your purposes, or it's not. So um, you will have your own uh, ju judgment. You will use uh, uh, your own judgment here. But some good practice is um, if you are uh, more experienced in, uh, in Python, you can just see the code and see what's, what's there. Uh, try it. Uh, mo try to modify that. So that's, uh, that's the, one of the very good options. And basically, it's as always, as in uh, um, science, in general, so see the resource, see if um, those people, what is the credit of these people? Uh, what is the credit of uh, the source? So um, nothing new, it's just uh, need, you need to try. Um, some hacks. So that's uh, for more advanced people actually. Uh, it's, um, it's a tool which uh, if, you are, if you already run more than uh, 100, 1,000, couple thousand of uh, experiments, and actually you have these issues uh, which which you will have at this stage. So, uh, if um, you need to be really, uh, you, you need to know what's going on if uh, in uh, um, in experiments and uh, what does it mean. And so, um, Steppy, it's a, it's a library which might help help you. Um, uh, yeah, the, the very uh, two basic abstractions, abstractions there, so steps and uh, transformer. Um, so that's something which you, you which you just take a look. And a good thing about um, data science and some resources for data science, it's um, um, at, at this website at Data Science Masters. Um, Okay, it's all purpose. It's even if you are advanced uh, data scientist, that might be a website which you actually would like to um, consider to just uh, take a look at there. Uh, it's something which um, which might be very, very helpful. You have a bunch of resources, um, e and you have there like both um, like both videos, uh, also um, 
you you have uh, like regular uh, tutorials, you have text, you have bunch bunch of things there. Um, and uh, do we have any mathematicians or uh, or um, let's say mathematicians in the room? Okay, there is one. Okay, perfect. And there is a second one. Okay, but you are advanced, so it's not for you. <laughs> Uh, but if you will be a mathematician or a physics and, and you would like to start with data science, um, there is a blog post by, by Piotr Migdal, which, which might be very, very useful. And it's like uh, he, he made himself the switch from, uh, from science, from basically from mathematics and physics into the data science. So it's like a um, very personal blog, but uh, uh, very, very useful, uh, useful things, uh, like useful hacks which you can find there. Okay, how many? Uh, how much time do I have? More than ten. More than ten. Okay, perfect. So, so how you can learn? Uh, basically, projects, cooperation, and contribution. And in terms of projects, um, it's something which is uh, very good for very beginners. On if you are the, begin the beginner in a a particular programming language, if you are a beginner in data science, if you are a beginner in anything connected, in my opinion, anything connected with, uh, w with uh, coding, it's good to find your project. It's good to just find what you actually would like to build, why you want to build that, and then, um, and then check if it's possible. So um, I would say, like, start with this sky is the limit and then see, uh, see what's actually possible. Uh, the other way, it's uh, like, uh, see, uh, let's see what's there. So let's see some projects which, uh, which are in data science uh, and see if there is something which is interesting for you. So in, in here on the slide, you have, uh, you have free resources uh, where you can find data science, um, data science projects. And you can basically uh, just see if uh, there is something which you feel connected uh, in terms of, okay, yes, I definitely would like to build something similar, or uh, that's the topic which I would like to uh, just dive deep. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that might be a good, good thing to do. And cooperation. I'm very happy to see uh, a gentleman with, uh, with Pi Ladies t-shirt. <laughs> Hi. Uh, and in terms of cooperation, uh, in terms of um, uh, like what, uh, how you can learn from, uh, from community, how you can be a part of community, how you can just build community, which will be very helpful for your, uh, for your learning experience, but it will be also, you know, it's just nice. It's just uh, nice to be a part of a community as well. It's safer and it's just uh, nicer, I would say. Um, but in terms of um, uh, offline things, um, uh, ladies are very lucky and in, in a way. Like um, there is uh, there is pie ladies, there is uh, um, gear, uh, sorry, Giger Scaras. It was something which uh, I was co-created. But there is also uh, girl geek, uh, which uh, which are very nice. They're, they are um, they are also he have their appearance in here in Edinburgh. And there is a bunch of uh, local groups uh, which uh, have uh, usually this uh, monthly meetings and uh, usually they also build um, or just uh, conduct some, some workshops or some uh, conferences and it's, um, you can find a bunch of information about these local groups of, of in the internet. And it's, um, it's uh, yeah, you can think about that uh, as a, also, one, one life hack which, which I have, uh, if I'm in a new, ci new city, I'm traveling a lot um, for, for, my, for my work and just because I like as well. Uh, and uh, if I'm in the new city, I'm checking if there is, uh, for example, pilot meeting or uh, pilot meeting, sorry, or if there is a women who code a meeting. Uh, for uh, all of us, like not, not only women, there are definitely like uh, pi data, which are also global. And uh, that's a community which uh, which also have very great, great um, uh, meetings. So, so that's something to check. And uh, basically for online uh, appearance, so uh, PySlack definitely uh, this uh, Python um, mailing list, this uh, tutor Python mailing list. Uh, it's something very helpful uh, if you have a particular questions. Uh, you also can see uh, because uh, this mailing list is really old. Uh, so uh, many questions were already answered. 
So you can just uh, go to um, uh, archives and you can see if, uh, if you will find uh, the answer for your questions. And that might be, that may, might be a good idea. And there is a group of, on uh, Facebook Python programmers that might be also helpful. And uh, contribution, the best part. Uh, Backtracker. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, it's like if you will go for this website for bugspython.org, uh, then you will see uh, then you will see a bunch of um, requests for uh, basically backtracking, and uh, you can see if the bug is um, taken or not, if uh, someone is working on that or not, um, if you can contribute there uh, very basically. Uh, very, very basically by, by just um, taking some back and uh, try to fix that. And um, backs are on very different levels uh, of... Um, uh, some backs are very simple, some backs are very advanced. So uh, it's something which might be good on uh, many stages uh, for, for your journey with, with Python. Uh, also, backs are uh, fixed on a sprint. So sprints will be Saturday and Sunday. Um, on, uh, on EuroPython and uh, on PyCon, there, there are sprints as well. Uh, so that's also a very nice, uh, nice uh, occasion to just meet uh, core developers and uh, to be more involved. And um, in general, not only in Python, but contributing to open source projects, there, there is this uh, open source guide which um, can answer many questions. Mm. Yeah, basically PySlack, which I mentioned before. Um, so, uh, and uh, PyData, which I also mentioned before, but uh, you can think about the PyData as an attendee, but you can think about PyData also as, um, as a speaker. Uh, so uh, it's always good to just, if you have a, some uh, topic which you would like to share with the community, or uh, even if um, you want to challenge yourself and you don't, do not have a topic, but you would like to uh, just find some and uh, share with the community, prepare this talk, pr um, make some effort there and share that with the community, uh, then, uh, then PyData is a good, good place to, uh, to just... Um, contact uh, organizers, local organizers, and say uh, that, uh, hey, uh, I'm, I have this talk or I would like to be a speaker. Uh, if you have some, uh, some previous speech, then it's always good to share that as well. If not, it's, it's also, also just good to reach out. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, like uh, workshops, uh, this uh, Django Girls workshop, they they made a really, really great job because uh, Django Girls, um, they prepare uh, not only the tutorial for workshops uh, from Django for very beginners, but they also prepare the all uh, like setup, how to prepare this workshop, uh, what you need to focus on, uh, how, how to speak with, uh, with a venue. So very, very detail-oriented um, uh, resource which which you can uh, which you can use to prepare Django Django uh, girls workshops. So that's something which, uh, yeah, they they made really great job. And um, something which uh, I was not able to uh, just fit into any of other slides. Uh, that's an idea of open education in general. Open education on uh, academia uh, level. It's uh, the, the idea. Basically, it's like um, you are if you are writing your uh, paper that might be from STEAM, but that might be also from sociology, that might be from different uh, perspectives as well. And you would like to share that um, uh, openly. You would like to make that open source, but in the same time, uh, you want to make that. Um, properly. You want to make sure that the paper will be reviewed, uh, that uh, other experts will just um, take care of this paper, will just um, see if um, is it something which uh, uh, is valuable and you will get some feedback as well. So that's, uh, that's rather uh, that's rather a new project, but uh, I uh, keep my fingers crossed very, uh, very strongly for this one. And basically, um, yeah, now 
And now I'm, uh, I would like to start a discussion. And uh, actually, I'm very curious about your stories. Um, do we have a mic? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically, um, if you don't mind, uh, it would be great uh, if you will tell, um, share with us some uh, some things about, like how did you start to learn Python? How did you start to learn data science? Uh, and actually, yeah, I'm very happy to just uh, answer some questions if there are some. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, like you you mentioned the Jungle Girls tutorial, which I think is really great. Um, because, uh, as you say, it's really starting from scratch also for people. Uh, if you don't know about that, it's like explaining what's a text editor and how to use Git and all these things that uh, most people consider is like a prerequisite to become a programmer. So it's really uh, good for non-technical people to start uh, Django and Python. But like the problem for me, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not really a problem, but it's focused on Django. And I've got a lot of people asking me, OK, I want to, to do data science. And what resources can you advise to start in data science from scratch? Mm -hmm. And the question is, uh, are you aware of any effort to like duplicate this kind of uh, Django Girls tutorials towards more like uh, data science uh, mm -hmm. th uh, things? Uh, do you know if anything like that exists? Is there any? Uh, that's a really good question. So uh, I haven't found anything like that. So um, basically, oh, I just would like to be on this. No. Uh, um, yeah. So uh, I unfortunately I haven't found anything like that uh, for data science. I know that the group uh, in Krakow, actually in Poland, a uh, group of Giggers Carrots, uh, they are working on some um, data science tutorials for very, very beginners. Uh, that's a different group than the Django Girls. Uh, but um, yeah, I've, I know that they are working on that. That's not uh, released yet. Um, but uh, in terms of Django Girls, uh, that might be a, actually uh, really good to, to just um, speak with them and see if there is some uh, if there is some way how um, how you you can combine this all knowledge which they they have in terms of organizing workshop in terms of work with very beginners and I'm sure that they are very open for that because uh, it's open source so um, basically um, that should be possible. And then, for example, get this uh, information from uh, this uh, data science masters and uh, just combine uh, something together. So unfortunately, I haven't found that, uh, that kind of um, workshop yet, but I'm sure that will, uh, will, will happen. And if you would like to speak about that after, then I will be more than happy. Uh, so I actually have an answer for you. Uh, you should look at software carpentry. Uh, it's a bit hard to actually organize an official event for software carpentry. You have to uh, go through the training or so. But all their materials are open, so you can just use them and or adapt them. Yeah, thank you. That's, uh, that's helpful. Uh, not a question from the audience. Anyone who would like to share uh, the story, like how did you start with data science? I'm, I'm really curious, I'm serious. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you sh one of your slides uh, was all the uh, Creative Commons license. And there is uh, big discussions about some of the restrictions that people decide to apply to that content, especially mm -hmm. the uh, non-commercial one. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your opinion about that? Um, in general, I, I want people to have a, a choice. So, uh, if um, yeah, in in general, I want people to have choice. So, if um, if they want to choose that their work might be used not uh, only for non-commercial purposes, so uh, no one can use this work to just earn some money uh, in direct or not direct um, way on that. 
um, then uh, I'm fine with that. Uh, like things which I'm creating, um, usually it's um, it's, uh, it's you you can use that for commercial use. Uh, that's my choice, but uh, I really believe that other people um, should have this choice to make on, of themselves. I'm not sure if that's answering your question. No, yeah, that's answer. <laughs> Looks like you are going to say something. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have another question for you. Uh, you mentioned Jupiter as mm -hmm. a suggestion for people to use. Uh, do you... Did you ever try Jupyter Lab? That's uh, people, the same thing that build Jupyter notebooks are building as their next uh, ID. Did you have any experience um, with Jupyter Lab? Not yet, but I would like to learn something more. So if you can actually tell something more about, about that, that would be great. Uh, so uh, for those who doesn't know, uh, the same thing that was building uh, Jupyter notebooks they decided to build the next ID on top of all the technology that they was using for Jupyter Notebooks. So uh, in terms of technology, you have a kernel and you use MZQ, if I'm not wrong, to connect the web browser with the kernel. That can be a Python kernel, can be a R kernel, or another language that's going to process the cells and contact, uh, send back the results. So they decided to use that uh, technology build a full ID and uh, looks very promising as far as videos and uh, I thought it's still very early days because they only reached the version 1.0 a few months ago but looks very interesting and they still support the uh, GP notebooks you just make it easy for you to access all the other local files and have all the information in one screen yeah I will definitely take a look at that uh, Jupyter Lab. Sorry. I don't think that anyone kind of wrote any uh, tutorial yet. Like still early days, you can look find uh, videos online of people demonstrating. And but it's easy to install as any other Python library now. You just need to pip install Jupyter Lab. And, uh, Jupyter Live, but I never use it. So uh, I wonder, is there any documentation for that? There is some documentation on the internet, so you can Google. Any other questions? Um, what about uh, the MOOCs, Coursera, and uh, EDX, and things like that? Oh, that, that's a good question. Uh, so it's like, um, if you all think about the uh, way as you are learning uh, as a learning experience, so uh, if you will think about uh, it not only about some courses which you have in the internet, which sometimes uh, like Coursera uh, or like a bunch of other um, resources like, uh, for example, by... Okay, I, th I think we don't need that for now. Uh, so, a bunch of other resources, like for example, uh, created by General Assembly or uh, some other online schools. Um, those are helpful, but uh, it's very, like uh, you will find a tutorial there. So you will find the, uh, okay, a very, ac most of the time, very academic way of thinking about some issues in data science which not uh, very often, which very often they are lacking this information how to, how and uh, why actually you will, you will need to um, use that. So what I really prefer in a learning experience in general, is like um, you have this project which you can work on, then yes, for these purposes you can use, for example, um, for, for example, Coursera and find some courses on very typical, uh, on very uh, particular projects, problem, sorry. Uh, so uh, you can find that, but it will be not um, like doing only this kind of courses. It's not. Uh, it's not enough. Um, actually, I, I, I was uh, very happy and uh, lucky actually to work with um, with many uh, women in Europe and in the US, like uh, mostly women, not only but mostly uh, work like to help them in this uh, transformation from um, from s one of the 
uh, like for example, for be working in finance into data science or in, into programming in general. And uh, what was working very well for uh, an adult who already has some kind of job, it was uh, like um, they, uh, if they had a project, if they had uh, people around who support that, and then resources is something which is necessary, but it's not the most important thing. Yeah, I just take this uh, a little bit around. But uh, if you would like to, uh, I, I have also the list of uh, commercial um, educational materials. So uh, if you are interested in that, I will be happy to share. Uh, we still have time for one question, if anyone from the audience wants to ask. Okay, uh, I'll not tell my story because it's a bit long, but one takeaway from my story is that uh, the workshops you mentioned, like Django Girls and uh, stuff like that, are really great if you can find one. Uh, it's, also, it's also fun to organize them, but it can be a bit, uh, bit daunting at first. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to, uh, so it takes three kinds of people for these workshops. You have somebody, uh, some teacher, some, some mentor, people who learn, and the organizer. And the organizer is kind of a uh, bit over, overlooked. But uh, if you want to learn something, it's usually not that hard to find the mentor if, if you know where to look. If you go, for example, to a Python meetup, you will find experts who, who will be very happy to actually teach someone. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you want to learn something, I would recommend going to, to a Python meetup, fishing around for someone who wants to teach, and then organizing a workshop. It doesn't have to be big. You can have you know, like three people, one mentor. Uh, and if that goes well, you can then scale up, go to the full Django Girls or, uh, or some, some, uh, some bigger workshop. That's really good tip. And actually, uh, on the very beginning, you can think about that as a, like a hackathon or just hack night. Hack night, that's a good name. So it's like to find this mentor and to just organize like uh, three, four uh, people and just um, set up the place. So, uh, for example, some coffee shop, which will be nearby, you know, that in the place you will have a coffee, uh, you have a table, which is like will fit uh, four people. And that's, that's it. Just announce when that will be. And like uh, in that kind of group, uh, just uh, email or a messenger or anything like that, and that should work. Yeah, thank you for this comment. Thank you uh, for all the questions from the audience, and I want to thank you, Camilla, again. So a round of applause for her. Thank you.